this is one of the very important libraries for dynamic data visualization in Python. Over time, there were many different packages were developed for visualizing different kinds of geospatial data. There are different backends. So Leaflet is one backend. There are other backends. For example, if you, there's a Mapbox CL, which is a really nice library for creating very interactive maps in 3D. So you have something called DeckGL, which is again GPU powered web rendering. So there are many of those that were developed. So now you have to say, okay, I've learned Folium. I now need to create a, a DeckGL map. You have to go and learn DeckGL. Then it's okay, I've learned this, but maybe it doesn't do exactly what I want. So I want to now use MapLibre, which is the Mapbox GL based project. So now I need to go and learn MapLibre. So that's why LeafMap was developed as a unified interface where you just learn LeafMap and then you can choose different backends and say, I want to create my map, but I want to use Folium. I want to use Kepler GL. I want to use DeckGL. And it, the API remains mostly same and you get the same experience just by using one API. LeafMap is also a really vast library. It does so many things. It is meant as a GIS toolkit in your Jupyter notebook. So if you want to do some analysis, it has got functions for those as well. It supports many, many different libraries. It was a sister project of another package called GEE map. If you're using earth engine, you must be familiar with that project. This allows you to kind of do all of those things, but without an earth engine account, it just uses leaflet as the main library and then builds things on top of that. And the great thing about LeafMap is also it works really well with Streamlit. So whatever you can do in Streamlit, you can do inside of your apps. So this also makes it very handy where you say, I don't want to use the library just for visualization, but I also can use this to build apps. And the LeafMap also provides you support for that. Let's see how it works. Currently, it doesn't come pre-installed in Colab, so we have to install it. We say pip install leafmap, and we can install that. Here, we're going to see how we can visualize different kinds of data. The idea for leafmap was you can throw any kind of data, and you can visualize it. If you have CSVs, if you have shape files, if you have GeoPandas data frame, if you have raster data, if you have some tile layer, you can just render everything on top of leafmap. And it just allows you to, it gives you function for all of that. So we'll get different kinds of data. Here, we are going to download some data in a GeoJSON format. This is some polygons in GeoJSON formats. We have roads as geo packages. We'll read that using GeoPandas and render that, and we'll see how to render some images on that as well. Okay, so let's create a map similar to how we create folium.map. We can create one, but instead of doing this roundabout way of specifying width and height, LeafMap says most people want to have a map that is certain width and height. So it just gives you that option by default. It does all of the other things internally. So it's a little higher level API than Folium. So it's a nicer way to work with Folium. And you can see I've got a map with a nice view. It also gives you a layer control by default. You don't have to add that. And it gives you some tools. You can draw stuff. You can draw stuff and get access to stuff you draw on the map. So if you want to do some analysis, you can use that. So we get a map like this and we can now add stuff to it. Let's look at the documentation. The main leaf map documentation has different modules. So you can see the, the leaf map, the main library, if you just say import leaf map, you get the API for a backend that is using IPy leaflet. This is another library that allows you to create leaf, leaflet maps using Python, not Folium. IPy leaflet has some different features. So if you just say import leaf map and start using it, you'll be plotting everything on a leaflet map, IPy leaflet map. We want to use Folium map. So if you, since we are familiar with Folium, you want to get a Folium map, you have to import leaf map as Folium. So here when we import, we can say import leaf map dot Folium map as leaf map. So we are switching a backend saying that now whatever we do with leafmap, we'll use the folium map as a default. So now when you have a code and you say, I want to switch backend, you can say, I want to switch to a different backend. I want to use deckgl instead. So we say from leafmap.deckgl, import leafmap. And now you suddenly you start using deckgl as a backend. And this makes it very easy to try different libraries and use them as and when it's needed. So we're going to use the folium map as a backend. The IPy leaflet has some problems with collab, doesn't work that well. 
but the folio map works really nice with Colab. It also allows you to add new base maps. You can say, I want a Google base map. And you can just say Google map is hybrid and you get a Google satellite view as the backend, which many people want. In some of the backends, I think even in newer versions at some point, this will stop working. There's a new way to say Google was not allowing the base map to be used officially. Now there's an official way. You sign up for a Google Maps API key and you initialize that before you call this different backends and you can render that. So sometimes in the future, if this doesn't work, the leaf map has a documentation on how to initialize backend for Google Maps, but you sign up for an API key and use that. One of the cool things about the leaf, uh, leaf map library is if you look at each module, let's say we look at the volume module, you can see here what are the different stuff you can add. I want to add a base map. Okay, there's an add base map function. I want to add a color bar. I want to add a geodata frame. I want to add geojson. I want to create a heat map. Bunch of things. All of the different types of data that you may want to add to a map, you have a function for that. So whatever data type that you want to add, you can just call that function and you can add that. You can also add data from OpenStreetMap directly on leaf map. We have an example of how to do that. So again, if you don't want to download data, upload it, just call this function. It downloads the data from OpenStreetMap and then does it on top. Add vectors and bunch of things. So let's see how we can render different kinds of data on top. We create a map. We have a JSON file, the GeoJSON file. You can say M, which is our leaf map map, add GeoJSON, and you can see that. So now it's showing this GeoJSON layer, polygons of different wards in the city, and you can see that. Similarly, if you want to add some roads data, we can say I have some roads in a geo package. I'll read them using GeoPandas, and then there's an add GDF function. So we can add a geodata frame, and again, the, you can pass on the same style keywords. They'll go to Folium, and they'll go to Leaflet, and they'll be rendered. So we can do this. It also provides this handy functionality. Remember, in the previous version, we had to say we had to compute the bounds and say folium set bounds. Here, there's a nice function, zoom to GDF. It just zooms to a geodata frame. And again, there are lots of nice API functions and they remain the same across different backends. So we write code and learn how to use them. You can use them with different backends. And you can see now we have rendered a road layer on top of that. Now you have a leaflet map here and we say add GDF. This gives you different options. It's much more limited API because it works across so many backends. But now you say, I know it's a, a folium map, you can say road GDF dot explore M equals this M. And this is renders on top of this. So if you want more control and want to render GeoPandas using the explore function, you can render it on top of that. Raster data, any of you would like to add raster data. The way all of this web mapping layers work is they would typically need tiles. So you see, you have a base map tiles. You have to take your image, divide into different tiles, and then based on which region you are looking at, at what zoom level, you get different tiles served to you from a server. That was the kind of old way of doing things where you have a large image, say I have five gigabyte of raster image. I can't load it in a browser. I can't render so many pixels at once. So what do you do? Well, you create tiles at different zoom levels. So say I'll take a low res version at zoom level four, chop it up into small, small tiles. When I'm zoomed out, give me the tile that covers this region at that zoom level. And as I zoom more, it lasts for those tiles. This worked well, but this is a problem that any raster that you want to render, you can now first create those tiles. And that takes up extra space, that takes up extra computation. And again, if you want to change something, like say I'm updating my raster every day, I have to pre-compute that every day. So splitting up the tiles was a problem. So people invented tile servers, servers like GeoServer where you put a server in between, say I have my source raster, I have a server in between. When I request a server, give me the tile for this region, you'll go and create the tile dynamically. You'll look at the raster in a database or a file, create the tile and serve it up to me. Now that adds an overhead, it becomes slow, I have to maintain a server and so on. There's a new way of doing this, which is changing the way you work with raster data in with geospatial data sets. And that is using this new file format called Cloud Optimized GeoTIFF. This format was invented to 
allow you to stream data from a file without having a tiles. Many people who have worked with Astra are familiar with the GeoTIFF format. So you have a GeoTIFF file, and if you want to read a GeoTIFF file, you have to read the entire file before you can see any pixels. This cloud optimized GeoTIFF is a backwards compatible format. So you take a GeoTIFF file, you convert it to a cloud optimized GeoTIFF. If you have a 50 megabyte image, it'll be 55 megabyte of cloud optimized GeoTIFF. And add some extra stuff to it, but that file is readable by any software that can read GeoTIFF, so it's backwards compatible. Plus, you have this extra stuff that you created, which allows any software that understands GeoTIFF, cloud optimized GeoTIFF, to request pixels directly from the image. So it was file sitting somewhere. You say, I want a pixel that is covering this region. And it only goes and finds a pixel from the file directly without having to go through a server. So you don't maintain a server, just say I have a file. I, instead of a plain GeoTIFF, I have a cloud optimized GeoTIFF, and I can now start using the data without doing anything extra. How do you create a cloud optimized GeoTIFF? Many software packages support it, most notably GDAL, which is a geospatial toolkit, allows you to take any GeoTIFF, transform it to a cloud optimized GeoTIFF. We have a tutorial, we teach a GDAL tools course, and we teach how to create a cloud optimized GeoTIFF. If you know GDAL, you have to say GDAL translate, output format, cloud optimized GeoTIFF. Any input data set, you'll get a cloud optimized GeoTIFF format. And in the process of creating this cloud optimized GeoTIFF, it adds overviews, it adds this lower resolution versions of that image in the file itself. It also optimizes it so that there's some extra header information that tells the software how the file is organized. Let's see how to work with this COG files. Here we have a URL. So I have a COG file sitting in my GitHub repository. This is URL to a cloud optimized URL. I don't want to download it. I want to just read the file directly into my map. And since it's cloud optimized GeoTIFF and leaf map understands how to work with cloud optimized GeoTIFF, it'll only request the pixels needed to render the data that I asked for. So I can say leaf map, add cog layer, and I just keep the URL to it. Let's see how it works. I get some data. You can see it's instant. I immediately got this data. It has not downloaded the full data. It has only downloaded the tile needed to show this at the zoom level. If I zoom in, it says, oh, I need higher resolution tiles. It downloads those tiles. You can see it fetched those tiles from the, from the file directly. As I zoom in, it's going to give me even higher resolution tiles. And the tiling is done on the fly. There's no server and you can render this. And this can scale to very, very large files and you can now use any raster that you have, put it up on any file server, put it on GitHub, put it on any cloud data storage, and you can just say, here's my file, render it, and you can render it on any software that supports it. You can do this in QGIS as well. In QGIS, you can add raster, give a URL, and it'll only load the stuff that you need. And it works and behaves like a regular GeoTIFF. One of the things about LeafMap is many people want to add a legend. And leaf map has a legend function. You can add a legend on your interactive map. So I have a map like this. I want to add some legend. It's a very simple legend function, not config, not hard to configure like what you do in matplotlib. Just say, give me a colors and list of colors and list of labels. And you can construct a legend and display that. So now I can display a cog and I'll have list of colors, list of labels. And when I render this, I'll see those. Yeah. So you can see now I have a legend on my map and and this makes it much nice to visualize this. And finally, once we have a map, we can call dot to HTML and save this as an HTML map, similar to how we have done before. And we get a nice HTML file, which is rendering this data on the map. So again, when you look at this file, it's gonna be a very small file, a 10 kilobyte file, which is now streaming the data from the cloud. Leaf map fetches the data from the cloud when it's needed. So you now have a legend, you are pointing to a source in the cloud. And as I zoom in, you can see it's going to get the high resolution data. So this is the preferred way if you have large rasters, convert to cloud optimized GeoTIFF, put it on any cloud storage, and then use leaflet to stream the data. And this is the modern way of doing remote sensing. It's like a difference between renting a DVD or streaming from Netflix, right? You just can skip to wherever you want, 
and just kind of see the data instantly with the, uh, apart from rather than just going and downloading the data. Let's see the true power of COG by loading a very large file. I want to show this file to you. This file is sitting in my Google Cloud Storage account. It is a nighttime lights image. So it's a image of Earth at night captured by the world's satellite. We have this global raster, 7.9 gigabytes. Very, very large raster. It's a global raster. What I have is I have a URL. This is the URL. You can download it and then view it in QGIS or something. But we can now, since this is a cloud optimized geotiff, we're going to stream it directly onto LeafMap. And the exercise is for you to read this file directly from the URL as a cog and display this on the leaf map for your own city. Vigna, you can explain the exercise. Yeah, so we want to visualize the large raster that we have. It is for nighttime lights. And we already have the URL for this. And we want to have some visualization here. So you will have to just use this option of add cog layer. And you can give parameters for the range of values that give you good visualization, which is 0 to 60. So you can rescale your raster visualization to 0 to 60. So this is one option that you will be using. And you can also use some palette to visualize. Here you see that it is a black and white raster, but we are using this palette for visualization. And also you can just put the zoom to layer equal to false because the it, it automatically zooms to the extent of the layer so just uh, you can put it false and you can just give bounding box for your region so this is how you can have a cog and with this you can explore all the options the you will find all the options mentioned here with uh, documentation and you can try apply all of this and see if you can get some good visualization of nightlight in your region when you're doing this exercise first just add construct the url you already have the cog url just display it as it is see how the data looks and then start adding one of those customizations. There are a few of those you need to do. Do it one by one, see if it works. We have given the documentation where those are documented. You can add these options one by one, see the change it brings to your data, and then finally figure out the bounding box for your city, and then you can create this final map.